But let's take a totally different, different, different approach here, okay? Now, we're about to totally switch it up, you know? I'm going to pour me up a shot of Casa Noble Ray Posado. It's one of the best Ray Posados I've ever had in my life. It was uh, aged in uh, bourbon barrels. So it has like a a nice aftertaste to it. I feel like I'm stepping on my man's gold mouse Tommy and shadow clock by doing like an, a drinking podcast, but that's not what this show is. It's not a drinking show. It's just a show that I drink on. Okay. That's for all the homies. I ain't got, well, I know some, I know some people who die, but I ain't gonna say I got no dead homies. RIP to the dead homies. So. We ballin', big baby. Taste of a little ultra. Hopefully, Mickey signs me. Uh, I can be Jimmy Butler's understudy. But cop accountability. With the mass shootings that we've had, I mean, I talk about Tulsa because it's a mass killing of black people. But then you go down to Texas and you have the Uvalde shooting. The, the, the mass murder of children in an elementary school. That's deep, man. Because you talk about kids who will be forever, who will be forever afraid to go to school. Parents who will forever be afraid to send their kids to school. Um, people, I mean, shit, man. Sandy Hook, Columbine, El Paso, like. It's getting to a point to where we've got to figure something out and whatever we're doing is not working. And I keep seeing the little, the little, uh, like, you know, little circle thing, the, the diagram saying that we're going to talk about it. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And then we're going to end up doing nothing. Yeah, you're right. That's what's going to happen. Is that what I accept? No, but I'm going to propose what we should do. Okay. Let's start with cop accountability. How do we hold law enforcement accountable? Because I remember sitting here on on the same podcast two years ago talking about over-aggressive cops and the unarmed killing of black men. And I go, what the hell is going on here? Like, guys unarmed, you made the wrong decision, but what ends up happening is if the cop is caught if the cop is caught up for doing uh, unlawful, unlawful shooting, uh, he may do some time. He may not. And then the, the taxpayers have to pay the family out. Okay. Family gets something for their losses, but they never get their family member back. So what, what are we really doing? And now we got Kate, a case of cops being under aggressive. You know, like it's one man in there. It's 19 of them ready to kick open a door, but the, the but the signal call to the quarterback won't hike the ball. And it's like, what? Oops, sorry. Wrong drop. And I mean somebody in Uvalde should just walk into his office and be like, You're fired. 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 Now, the person who just said that he would never fire him because, you know, it, it he was at the NRA convention just, just spouting nonsense. But that's a conversation for another day. So we have the, the, the chief of school police. He made the call not to breach the classroom. And he had spent many years in law enforcement. But I think that when you have a mass shooting going on in your school, I think when the actual police show up, they should have jurisdiction. I get it. He's chief of school police. I'm the man for the job. All right. Well, sometimes the job gets too big for you. And the bigger guns have to come in. Because who do you trust more? School police? Or police police. I trust police police more than school police. Personally. 
And then eventually, I think uh, Border Patrol got involved. But nonetheless, uh, who bears the brunt of the responsibility? Because ultimately, the decision maker was the chief of school police. Now, he had 19 cops ready to make a move from everything that I've read. They were ready to go. They were ready to kick in the dough and, and, and save those children. But the decision was not made to allow that to happen. There were rumors that cops went in, saved their kids, left other kids in there. I've not been able to validate that. So if that's true, fuck them. They're sick. But if that was just another story that took off, then it's 2022. Men lie, women lie, numbers do too. But when you think about it, and you got the school chief of police police thinking about collateral damage and how many of his own he could lose or how many of the local police that he could lose. That's a legitimate question, right? That's a legitimate thought. And I go, well, you take an oath to protect and serve. And in this environment, we're talking about protecting and serving children. Children in an elementary school who are being murdered by a sick son of a gun. You got to kick that door in. You got to get that janitor key. You got to do whatever it takes to get it done because part of protecting and serving is putting your life on the line for others. The reason why public servants get discounts, the reason why public servants get get free drinks, the reason why public servants get free meals, the reason why public servants get, get first-class seats that they didn't pay for, the reason why public servants get handshakes and hugs when they go out in public is because they took an oath to do what everybody else was not willing to do. They said, hey, I will die for you just because you live here. I will put myself in harm's way to take you out of harm's way. And I don't know you from Tom, Dick, Harry, Larry, Mary, or whoever the hell it is, because that's what I wanted to do. I accept these discounts. I accept these great benefits. Why? Because I am willing to die for people I will never meet. I am willing to die for people I will never talk to. I will willing, I'm willing to die for people who may hate me. Let's not forget about the perks of being a public servant. Let's not forget about that because guess what? That's what comes with the territory. So when you're using a technicality versus an active shooter or a shooter who's barricaded and he's no longer a threat, nah, bro, nah, man, I don't think he'll make any more threats. Well, you got kids in the room still calling 911, so guess what? They're fucking scared. That means there's people still alive. You made the wrong decision. And then you have Stephen McCrow. I hope I said his name right. Sorry, Stephen McCrow come out and say, and I listened to him talk about it, like, hey, it wasn't my call, but the wrong decision was made. And now Uvalde, police department and school district, y'all are no longer cooperating because y'all got mad that somebody called y'all out. That sounds like accountability to me. Sounds like some heads need to turn. Sounds like some people need to be get need to get fired. Sounds like some pensions need to go to cover some funerals. But we've got to find a way to hold cops accountable for bad decisions. Because, again, sometimes you, you just made the wrong decision. Things happen. Collateral damage. That's real. But when you got people calling 911, you got kids calling 911, you know they're not able to, 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 to do anything. You got your guys ready to go and they can't go, 
there needs to be some accountability. Y'all get upset when people talk about defund the police, but this right here is the prime reason why defund the police makes sense to those who believe in it. And personally, I agree with what defund the police actually means. I just don't agree with calling it defund the police because we're not defunding the police. We are reallocating funds from the police. And I think that's important to say here. And I will always echo that on this platform. But when you go, bro, y'all got SWAT team type people. Y'all got people with military type stuff. And y'all scared to go in here and and, 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 and knock off one person, kick in the dough, wave in the fofo. Come on, man. And I'm making light of it, but I'm not making jokes about it because I'm serious. Like, it's one person in there. Y'all are the trained professionals. These are fucking children. I'm talking about children. I mean kids. I mean K-I-D-S. I mean, can't stay at home by themselves. We just going to leave them there? And now you're not cooperating? Because... They called you out for something that's true. That's not accountability. And that's the problem. We need more cop accountability. Because when there's bad police work, there needs to be a level of accountability that is applied to those police officers to ensure that they are operating at the highest standard possible. So when stuff like this is happening... We save lives. We save as many lives as possible. And I'm not one to say defund the police. And I'm not even one to say reallocate funds from the police. All I'm saying is properly allocate the funds to the proper training and the proper programs to ensure that our police can best protect and serve. You you see what I'm saying? I'm here on both sides. Like, what makes sense? Because I'm going to go ahead and tell you, if they're scared, they need to go to church. But if they're scared, I understand it. And I'm not even, like, mad. I'm not even, uh, uh, like, for people to sit here and be like, well, that's their oath. And they're just supposed to go in there. Like, man, yeah, you take the oath. But if you're sitting there thinking, like, my life could be over. But at the same time, when you when you got police forces with M4s, ARs, you know, high end shotgun sniper rifles, flat Kevlar, that's what it's there for. It's there for you to go in there and engage and properly engage. Because when you see there are so many instances of unarmed people getting killed. But then when somebody's armed and there's hesitance and hesitance and hesitance and hesitance and hesitance and hesitance hesitance to go in there and get them, you go, oh, shit, man. Y'all are exactly what I thought you were. You hide behind the badge. You hide behind the gun. But at the end of the day, you scary. You ain't made from what what what, what you say you made from. You're defined by your badge and your gun and your cuffs. Because the second somebody else, it, it ain't no fun when a rabbit got the gun and the rabbit had the gun and the, the shot caller, the decision maker, was afraid that if he made that call, he wouldn't have no fun. But if that son of a bitch don't get fired and lose his pension, ain't no hope for humanity. But we need a resolution that doesn't come at the, disf- the, the expense of taxpayers.